first you need to talk with your contractor or employer and see where the vendors are coming from for example you need to ask them where do the equipments for this part come from and usually when you're in the modeling process the employer still hasn't decided yet which company they're going to use to get the fan coil or the chiller or the pump from now the trading process might have not happened yet but the vendors are usually assigned by the start of the program now in order to improve your work quality first you need to know exactly who the vendors are in order to prevent any redoings and this is actually because different companies may create a fan coil for example with different sizes and so because of this fact it can be really helpful to you to know who the vendors are and if you actually don't know who they are and you're trying to think how to model the equipment from the renderings of the five biggest companies that you can see it is usually recommended to select the rendering of the equipment with the biggest size and if you actually do this later on if you see a change in your vendor and then you'll need to make any changes you'll have less problems for example if you're going to model this fan cool over here you're either going to select the biggest size or the one that's used in the most plans for this type of design now the people who are mechanics themselves already know this by nature for example they know this company makes these parts in these specifications now as we recommended that's what you should do so that later on when you find out who the vendor is and well it could be the same size which you're going to use anyway so that's fine but if the size needed was smaller it's even better you have even more space to work with and this is why i said usually try to select the biggest size for your equipment so that later on you'll have less problems to work with and as of now you can see the fan coil that we're working with here now i can go over here and give it its material that should be galvanized let's look for that in the material browser menu all right so we'll select this one select the use render box and hit ok and then apply all right so this connection is actually concerning the duct that we have over here now you can also assign a parameter to a flow that you have here in the parameter properties that's to your preference i'll put this under instance and then hit apply and ok and these are all preferential parameters and you can also do this separately for the pipes here as well and what else so now i'll save the file click yes and then load into project override the existing version and i'll place it right here so after selecting it i'll increase its size and in the dimension section i'll put in 0.44 height because our duct here is 24 by 8 as you know hit space space and there we go that's where we place the duct and for the length we'll put in 0.74 l and then for the w i'll put in 1.25 all right then using the move tool i'll select this corner then i'll go over here and hit tab all right and there we go so for this part we actually have a collision so i'll select this and then i'll increase the height under the offset from host i'll put in 2.95 then i'll have to put the discipline under coordination which it already is then i'll go over to the visibility click on override for transparency it's on zero so then i'll go over to the revit links tab and uncheck the two boxes for underlay and hit apply and okay now it's better and you can get a better look at it from this view and from this angle you can see it actually has a collision point with the suspended ceiling 
So I'll change the offset to 3 meters and then go over to the front view. So now it's practically connected to the ceiling. Let's move it lower, put in 2.98, first 2.95, then 2.97. All right, put an eight and let's see. All right, change it to 2.99. And there we go. And as you can see, we're using as much space as we possibly can. All right, so then I'll select it and move the depth and bring it over here. So you can see it from this angle as well. All right, so after that, we can see from the side view that we have a wall over here. Well, not wall, the suspended ceiling and the height differential that we've covered. Now let's go over here where I can select the view range and click edit and put the offset on 3.2. Now that's for the top offset where we can apply as well. All right, now let's go back to the view range once again. Now we don't need to see any minuses in the offsets. Now we can put these on zero instead. All right, and then you don't actually need to see the sewage in the HVAC sections, but its existence can help you check the collision points better. And you can actually assess the collision points in the 3D view as well. So now I can go over to the visibility section and then to the filters tab where i can add the sanitary and vent filters and then uncheck their boxes so that we can have them but don't actually have to see them in this view right here so then under the duct i can only see the ducts oh it seems like i've made a mistake let's get rid of these two over here under the filters then we'll need to move the view range back to its original place which was about minus 0.7 and the top offset on 2 as well okay so now we're done with this part let's close it up and then we can proceed to the hvac parts and open up this level in the plan we just have to wait for the command to be confirmed and all right it's right here so now let's go over to the visibility section and the revit links first let me select all of the levels because we've already worked with filters now i'll need to put them on none so now i can go back to the visibility graphics menu then head over to the imported categories tab and then select these two boxes and this one as well just leaving the cooling to be and all right we are okay here as well so we'll hit apply and then i'll put this on fine settings then i'll edit the view range here as well so open up the view range and for the top offset i'll put in 3.2 and then hit apply okay then after that we can put the plan on shaded settings so that we can see this part more easily and all right this is the view that we get so now we can select the measure tool and put a measuring over here from the edge to the wall and put it fixed on 0.3 so that we'll be able to control it so now in order to start the fabrication process we can begin with a transition now let's see if we actually have that all right scroll through the menu and all right it's right here and we can also use the shoe as well which is down here and it fits the plan perfectly all right now let's go back to the 3d menu so i can see exactly where i'm supposed to put this close this plan and so then i'll select the shoe and place it right here well actually because we have a changing size i can use transition instead and that will be more suitable 
So first, after it's recognized the connection point, we can click on it and connect them up. Then we'll have to control it. As you remember, the ducts are listed with inches. So first, let's go over to the Manage tab and open up the project units. And under the HVAC, we can select the airflow and then edit the format and put it on CFM or UPS or whatever settings that to your preference. Uh, but be sure to match up the settings because they're actually unique for this part. So finally, I'll put this on cubic feet per minute and select that under the unit symbol as well and hit OK. And then after that, we'll get to size. We just have to look through the menu to find the duct size. There we go. I'll right click on the format and put the unit on fractional inches then we'll put the rounding to one fourth and hit ok ok now the specifications that we are given here are in inches and we can also control them based on the original design 